assalam alaikum uh, today's topic is the introduction to the human development so we are going to start with the developmental anatomy that is the embryology and this is the first lecture about the introduction to the human development and i am your associate professor dr in this lecture we'll discuss what is embryology what are the different developmental periods how uh, is what is the significance of the embryology the creation of the human being by the holy quran some of the historical glimmings and what are the descriptive terms and the planes used in the embryology and what is the human timeline human embryonic development or the human embryogenesis is referred to the development and the formation of the human embryo it is characterized by the process of the cell division and cellular differentiation of the embryo that takes place during the early stages of the development that is from the time of the fertilization till the time of the birth so human development is not a a single process it is a continuous process that begins with the fertilization and it is continuous after the birth so when a, a oocyte or a female germ cell is fertilized by a male germ cell a sperm it forms a fertilized egg this fertilized egg is called the zygote which is a totipotent cell and it is capable of cell division and the cell differentiation and by the process of these cell division the cell differentiation the migration and the growth and the program cell that this zygote is transformed into the multicellular human being now the developmental periods are of two types that is the before the birth which is called the prenatal period and after the birth which is the postnatal period now the prenatal period or the time before the birth is further divided into two periods the embryonic period and the fetal period the embryonic period is from the time of the fertilization till the 8th week of the development which is the stage 23 of the uh, embryonic period and the fetal period starts from the 9th week now from the 9th week we don't, don't call it an embryo we call it a fetus and from 9th week till birth is the fetal period this is a diagram showing you the early development of the, uh, the human development these are the developing follicles and the developing follicles lead to the process of the ovulation and this is the stage 1 which is the fertilization which takes place 14 days after the last menstrual period the cleavage then is the uh, cell division into the 16 cell stage which is called the marula then the uh, formation of a cavity which leads to the early blastocyst then is the formation of the uh, embryo blast at one pole which is the late blastocyst and then is the stage 4 in which the implantation takes place in the uterine wall and then the further growth of this uh, embryo takes place into the wall of the uterus or the endometrium so we'll discuss these stages of the embryo one by one in our later lectures so the embryonic development starts from the stage 1 which begins at the fertilization and the stage 23 at this stage the embryonic stage ends and after that is the fetal stage so the whole gestational period which is of the 9 months the human gestational period is divided into three trimesters of 3 months each and during this whole of the gestational period the 9 months the most critical stages of the development they occur during the first trimester that is the 13 weeks when the embryonic and the early fetal development is taking place and the organogenesis is taking place so this is also a diagram showing you the different stages of the embryonic development and you can imagine the uh, these uh, the actual size of the embryo is shown here which is uh, in this stage 15 for example the actual embryonic size is the 7 mm and this is the, the enlarged diagram to show you the parts so the actual size at stage 15 is the Uh, this 7 mm uh, this is uh, crl stands for the crown rump length 
and what is the crown rump length this is the measurement of the embryo or the fetus from the highest point or, or that is the vertex till the buttocks so this is the actual size of the 7 mm or this uh, uh, 13 millimeter which is shown in these diagrams so we'll discuss in the later lectures so this is we're showing you the growth of the fetus after uh, the uh, after the embryonic period there is the increase in first there is the increase in the head size and the body is very small in proportion to the head and then later at, uh, how does the fetus grows till the full term Now the uh, growth process continues after the birth and the, after the birth we call it a postnatal period. So just one, one, first four weeks after the birth they called a neonate and one year after the birth is called an infant. So childhood is the age from the two years to, uh, to the puberty. Now puberty is... Uh, uh, the, uh, by definition it is functionally age of when the person male or a female is functionally capable of reproduction and this age is uh, variable in the different regions and also it is variable in the males and the females so it's if it starts from the eight years uh, then uh, eight years to uh, maybe it's uh, uh, in some regions at it is 11 years so from 8 to 13, 14 years is the age of the puberty. Then is the adolescence age, that is the teenage adolescence age from 18 to 19 and 21 years <clears throat> and the adult age. So after uh, uh, 25 years, the secondary ossification centers, they have already closed, that is the secondary ossification centers of the bones, they are ossified with the primary centers or the diaphysis and no linear growth can take place after the 25 years. That is the height of a person cannot be uh, uh, changed after the 25 years because all the epiphyseal centers or secondary centers, they have united. So after that age, only there is the maturity and the growth in the, in the girth. So linear growth stops. So after that is the middle age and the old age. Now, how, why we study the embryology? What is its significance? So the embryology is not only we, the essential for the medical students as the uh, basic uh, 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 subject of their curriculum, but also it is very important and exciting to uh, and a fundamental subject to understand the human development and the human body. Now, one of the branch of the embryology, it deals with the birth defects, which is called the teratology. And it is a very important aspect of the embryology because the uh, normal development to understand the normal development and also the abnormal development is very, very important to understand the congenital defects and the birth defects because these birth defects, they are, uh, uh, they are a major cause of the infant deaths. So the uh, people, they come to their physicians because of their birth, uh, child's birth defects or congenital defects. So the teratology, it deals with the birth defects. So medical embryology has traditionally covered not only the normal human development, but also the defective development. Now this study of the embryology or the knowledge of the embryology, developmental anatomy is very, very important for the obstetricians and pediatricians to know their normal as well as the abnormal developments. So you uh, may also be familiar with the uh, terms which are uh, commonly used in the press, in the journals, in the magazines, and uh, you have been uh, familiar with these words like in vitro fertilization, embryo implantation, cryopreservation of the embryos, the stem cells, and the cloning. So the physician should uh, have uh, apprehend themselves with the knowledge of all these subjects, and they are very, very important for the researchers and also uh, for the 
uh, obstetricians and the pediatricians. So we'll discuss these subjects later on. Now, so the course of the embryology should provide the medical students with the scientific basis of the normal and the abnormal development. So any uh, myths or the social taboos, they should be discarded because of the scientific basis of the understanding of the mechanism of the normal and the abnormal development. Embryology, it bridges the gap between the prenatal development and obstetrics, perinatal medicine, the pediatrics, and the clinical anatomy. So it develops the knowledge concerning the beginnings of the human life and the changes which occur during the prenatal development. So it is of practical value in helping to understand the causes of variations in the human structure. So to know the, the, uh, the gross anatomy, to better understand the gross anatomy, you must understand the developmental anatomy, the normal and the abnormal development. So by the study of the embryology, the gross anatomy is better uh, understood by the students also and by the physicians. Now the creation of the human being has been discussed in the different eras and there has been an, many ancient concepts about the development of the human being. But the, our Holy Quran has described the creation of the human being 7th century AD. And there are many verses in the Holy Quran about the creation of the human being. And uh, for example, in the Surah Tariq, verse number 5 to 8, it is said, Then let man consider from what he is created, created from a gushing water, which comes out from between the lions and the ribs. Undoubtedly, Allah has the power to restore him. And in another Surah Mu'minun, the verse number 12 to 14, it is said, And surely we made man from the extract of clay. Then we made him a drop of water and put in a strong serenity. Then we made the drop of water a clot. Then we made the clot a piece of flesh. Then we made the bones with the flesh. Then we developed it into another shape. So blessed be Allah, the best creator. So there are many verses and we'll discuss these stages, all these stages which are mentioned in the Holy Quran before any uh, latest technology was there and no microscope was there. So we'll discuss all these stages of the embryo development one by one in our later uh, lectures. Some of the historical gleanings and there is a very much interesting uh, history of the embryology which has been explained by Egyptians, the Greek scholars, the Aristotles, and in the different eras. So you can, uh, if you have interest, you can uh, study them in detail. So there are a few of the uh, gleanings. This is a diagram uh, from the Aristotle concept of from 15th century to 17th century, in which there was a concept that uh, there is a coagulum of a blood which is already present in the uterus or the womb of the mother. And this coagulum of the blood it is later on transformed into the fetus. Now this is a diagram uh, from a famous painter, Leonardo da Vinci. And you know that uh, Leonardo da Vinci uh, was a famous uh, uh, mathematician, painter, anatomist, and he was in he was in, in the era or the period of the Renaissance, 17th century, where he um, showed you the concept of the uh, development of the fetus in the uh, embryo. This is a cut section of the embryo. Now he gave the embryo embryology a quantitative concept and he measured the different parameters of the fetus during the prenatal period. So uh, are you familiar with the Leonardo da Vinci? You should uh, know, uh, read about it also, very interesting. And uh, you know, uh, the famous painting of the Leonardo da Vinci was uh, Mona Lisa. 
so he was basically an anatomist. I consider him an anatomist. This is a early microscope, the development of the lens. And so with the development of the lens, there was better understanding of the uh, germ cells and the development. So there was also the prevailing concept of the uh, in, the, in the 17th century that uh, a miniature human being has already been present in the sperm. And this uh, sperm, when meets the egg, this miniature human being is complete. So these were the various concepts in the different eras, but there is a detailed history of the embryology and you can, uh, for your interest, you can read, uh, read it and uh, it's very interesting. Now, what are the terms and planes we use in embryology? As you know, in the, the, uh, the adult anatomy or the gross anatomy, we study when the person is in the anatomical position. That is the person standing forwards with the palms facing forwards, with the face for, facing forwards, and, the, and the, patient, uh, the person is erect and supine. And then we describe the terms like the anterior and towards the back, the posterior, then towards the head, we call it a superior, and towards the foot, we call it inferior. And if it is close to the origin, we call it proximal, and away from the region, we call it a distal. But in embryo, by for describing the terms of the embryology, uh, the structures which are towards the front or the towards the uh, anterior wall, we call them as ventral. And the structures which are towards the back or the back wall, we call it dorsal. So the structures which are close to the head or the, we call them cranial and which are close to the tail, they are called the caudal. Now there are uh, different planes. Uh, there is uh, the one median plane, one median plane which divides the embryo into the two equal halves, the right and the left. So this is the median plane. Then the sagittal plane is any vertical planes parallel to the median uh, plane is a sagittal plane. Then uh, the, the terms, these lateral, medial, these are according to the planes. And this is a section, the transfer section, which we can cut at any level of the embryo, the transfer section. Now the frontal or the coronal section is at the right angle to the median plane, which divides the embryo into the ventral and the dorsal halves. So the human uh, pregnancy or the human uh, uh, gestational period is uh, comprised of the nine months. Now you can find out that uh, uh, what is the gestational period of a mice, uh, chick, and an, an elephant also. So the, these uh, human uh, nine months of the gestational period, they are divided into three trimesters. That is the first trimester, second trimester, and third trimester. Now, each trimester is of the three months, right? As it is suggesting the trimester. So this whole period can be also divided into weeks and also into the days. So this first trimester is the embryonic period. And in weeks, we have this from one to eighth week. So one to eighth week of the gestation, they are called the embryonic period. Now this period is a very, very critical period because all the organogenesis is taking place in this period. Now the, if we uh, divide this embryonic period into stages, as uh, previously we mentioned in the diagram, so these stages of the embryonic period, they are from stage one, that is the stage of fertilization to the stage 23. So the fetal period, it starts after the eighth week, that is the ninth week we call, do, we do not call it an embryo. After the ninth week, uh, from the ninth week, it is the fetus. So the fetal period starts from the ninth week till the birth. Now the, uh, the, the expected date of the delivery can be calculated from the uh, last menstrual period, the date of the from the last menstrual period or from the date of the fertilization, which is 14 days after the last menstrual period. 
so the whole of the uh, fetal uh, the whole of the gestational period is uh, can be divided into weeks which are 36 to 40 weeks which are the normal pregnancy period so this is the human timeline so this is all about the introducing you with the developmental anatomy so if you have any queries we can you can contact at the, your uh, whatsapp group and uh, give me the feedback how would you uh, what are, how would you like this uh, lecture okay thank you